Hi, welcome to What Matters with Dr. Kynes. I'm your host, Kasia Kynes, Doctor of Clinical Nutrition. I'm a global leader in uh, Epstein Barr virus uh, methodology for recovery, uh, CEO and founder of Global EV Institute. I'm a writer, I'm a lecturer, and I am an expert on wellness. But today I'm your host, and the reason why I created What Matters is because I think we live in a fear based information age. But what happens is that we are spiritual beings. We're having a physical experience and we need more healing and more understanding of the possibilities that the healing is at our fingertips in all kinds of modalities. So in my life, I've been very fortunate to meet amazing light workers. Light workers to me are people that are facilitating the healing, teaching us about the, the, the gifts of it and bringing us hope to make our planet a better place. And boy, do we need that. Do we need that sparkle? Do we need that love? Uh, so I feel responsible to bring these amazing people to us and share their wisdom, what they want to tell us, tell about, tell us about the love, the possibility of healing, and how we can make this planet better for us, our children, and our animals. And today is very special. Today, my guest is Liz Schuster, a very dear friend of mine. We go way back when, and she is actually the inspiration behind What Matters with Dr. Kynes. Because of her, I kept thinking, how can we bring these amazing people like her to our communities so they can speak and they can share, and we can all get a little bit of that love and healing, the possibility of it as well. So let me, uh, let me welcome Lynn Schuster. Hello, Lynn. Hi, Kasha. It's so great to be here. This is so exciting. <laughs> My pleasure. I am, I am totally tickled, tickled, tickled to death. Uh, so let me uh, read you guys a little bio of where Lynn is coming from. Lynn Schuster is a leading animal communication expert and teacher. She's the founder and CEO of Animal Spirit Talker. We call her Animal Spirit Talker. As a telepathic animal communicator, Lynn has the ability to hear what the animals have to say, and she's able to help strengthen the bond and the bond relationships between animals and their human families. Through meditative process, she hears and senses what the animals have to say. She helps people to connect with the animals, encouraging love and healing for both the animals and their human families. But I actually have a little bit more to say because she's also an artist. She's a Reiki master and she teaches people, and I want to take her class, how to communicate with animals better. And I, I try different things that she teaches me here and there, but I want to take her class. Uh, she's a visionary and a mediator. She inspires people to see, feel, and believe that they can indeed communicate with their animals, guides, and even angels. She's passionate about helping all species, both animal and human, to transform themselves on their, or their situations into what they dream they could be. There's a lot, a lot, a lot I can tell you about Lynn. I love what she says when she says she's championing for the animals. Mm -hmm. The animals have a lot to tell us, and I've been her student too. Our animals are here to remind us that we can love unconditionally. We are here together to help each other heal the fear that is blocking us from realizing our true selves. Uh, let me see, I, I got lost here. Yes, through the animals, we can find our spirits and our passion. We can release the fear that is blocking us from going within and looking deeper. Through our relationships with our animals, we are able to open our hearts and feel the love of the divine, transmuting all that no longer serves us and the highest good of all. She's the most compassionate lady that I know. I love her dearly and I am proud to call myself her friend. So welcome, 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 Lynn. Finally, we get you here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for inspiring me. So we're having our tea. What are you drinking? So I've got my ginger, ginger and lemon. I use the fresh, fresh ginger um, and uh, and infuse that in my water and then squeeze some fresh lemon juice in there and sometimes I treat myself to a little honey. <laughs> <laughs> Great for immune system. Exactly. 
That sounds delicious. I have my favorite um, Earl Grey, fair, fair trade, uh, loose tea with a squirt of lemon. So that's my little perk me up. I love that. So uh, we're recording it in early May when 2020, when we are still in quarantine. So uh, maybe we should touch up on this and what challenges you see when you are working with animals right now and their human companions. <laughs> Um, right, right. Yeah. I'm sorry to share a lot, but yeah, let's maybe make it a little relevant for where we are as we're recording it. Okay. Very good. Um, I've been um, actually doing a lot of Reiki with the animals and with the humans. Um, a lot of Reiki sessions just to relax, bring everybody into a relaxed state. Um, a lot of the animals are um, the domestic animals, because I've been talk also talking to the wild animals. They keep showing up in my yard or on walks or in my sessions um, with other um, humans and animals. Um, so I've been extra busy talking to all kinds of, of animals that are showing up. Um, the domestics, a lot of our domestic animals are feeling uh, their human's fear and they can't figure out why their home so much and they can feel like the boredom and the you know trying to figure out how to live life mm -hmm. you know when maybe they're not working or you know everybody's at home now um and the, the kids are home when they're supposed to be in school um so a lot of the animals are are feeling uh, like they're not sh exactly sure what their jobs are mm -hmm. or that they're overworked mm -hmm. um some are taking on, um, some of the animals are actually taking on health issues, which is, which um, I'm trying to uh, let them know they don't have to take on their, their human's health issues. So some of them are more lethargic or there's actually been a few of the animals, um, a few more deaths of animals that the vets don't know exactly what the reasoning is they don't have you know a diagnosis for why they're sick or or um you know what's happening so my clients uh, my human clients have been calling me to um, discuss these matters with their animals and help them that's why i've been doing a lot of reiki to help them release and just feel gentle and feel you know the gentle energy the loving energy and reminding um everybody both animals and humans that when we hold the space of love it raises our vibration and fear and, and love cannot be in the same place at the same time so um i've been also sharing a lot of uh, a love meditation um with my humans and that they can do with their animals about bringing in love and um, if we have time later on at the end I can I can do that with everybody um, thank you thank you for the mm -hmm. I love how you how you are how you call us uh, animal companions and human companions mm -hmm. exactly I really hate the word pets mm -hmm. I really do uh, because it takes the individuality and the the, the human aspect like that the being aspect of it a pet is toy, and so that's just endearing that you know you you bring that awareness just right. uh -huh. yeah they are my companions they actually uh, uh i can't see on the there's on my loom bench my very expensive <laughs> uh cat perch <laughs> which is also you uh, can see her weaving, uh, weaving a station a loom. beautiful loom yes but um, both of my cats are, 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 are here next to me. Um, let me just kind of give a little turn there. There they there's are. And there's, whoop, I can't oh, tell which one. I can, I can there's see. There's Haley, mm -hmm. yeah. which they usually don't sit that close together. They are okay with each other, but afternoons sometimes they get a little, um, I think, bored and, and they chase each other around and actually kind of fight. So the animal communicator has animal problems <laughs> in her own house. <laughs> uh, like, you know, you can have a therapist who has three kids at home, and sometimes it happens with a therapist, a kid's therapist who has three kids. Where yeah, she, yeah. Uh, life, life happens to everyone. Um, so, in the, so this is a question actually that I want to ask you since we're talking about the COVID-19. Like if I'm sitting with my cat 
And the cat is a little anxious and snappy just because we're fearful and we're talking to, you know, the spouse and we're watching the news and oh, every night and all that. Um, now the, uh, the, the animal companion doesn't quite understand. So there's a kitty saying, is there a way for me to kind of focus and look at them or think about them and say, we have this illness that is going around. It's not here, but that's why we worry. So they have a, how do we communicate that to them? So they say, okay, I get it. I get it. That's why you're home. There's a joke going around. The dogs think that you quit your job to finally be home and play with them. And the cats think mm -hmm. that they always knew you were a loser. If you lost your job, yeah. <laughs> 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 I've seen that. Uh, well, I asked my cats right away. You don't think I'm a loser, right? <laughs> it's a human joke, I believe. Um, so mm -hmm. let's let's talk about it. You know, you, you're sitting with a dog and and with the with the kitty and with the dog. How do you bring bring that thought and somehow send it? And how do you know that they heard it? Because that's their the most difficult thing for people to understand and sometimes you tell me yes yes you told charlie this is rkd and he heard you yeah you, he got the message but i thought it was in my head because it was so subtle i wasn't sure so it's like a very different realm and people don't know it that's why i'm so excited to share mm -hmm. your, your wisdom here yeah. what do we do right now with this covid to kind of make them a little bit more at ease so they have a frame it's like oh i get it i understand what you're saying Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so our best, the best thing that we can do is feel at peace ourselves and feel love. And the easiest way for me to bring myself into that peaceful place, because I, I just like everybody else, kind of, <laughs> well, uh, when we have fear, that's the first thing we do is we go, <gasps> and we hold our breaths. Yes. So, um, I... <sighs> I, but I'm, when I'm connecting with the animals, exactly. Feeling the breath is the most important aspect and uh, gift that we have, no matter what. Whether we're trying to communicate with the animals, each other, ourselves, our breath is the most important thing that we have. So feel deep belly breathing. Mostly we breathe what I call by default. We are, um, we're breathing because that's our, our God-given gift. We don't even have to pay attention to it. It just, we just breathe. Okay. But when we're mindfully breathing, I'm aware that I'm breathing and I, my, I'm bringing that breath all the way down to my belly. So feeling my belly rise and fall. And I can breathe through my nose or my mouth, but, and also I close my eyes. When I'm talking to the animals, I usually close my eyes. So I'm bringing myself into a place of, of um, peacefulness. And what I do is I imagine the animals photograph in my mind's eye. So I'm imagining right now, I'm imagining my cat Haley, who's sitting on my loom bench, um, looking out the window. <laughs> I'm, I'm at, and she helps me in my classes, um, so I'm imagining her, and I just stated my intention is to speak with Haley. And when I see her animated or moving in my mind's eye um, from that photograph of her, um, I know I have a connection. So right now I'm seeing her jumping off the loom bench. She's not really jumping off the loom bench, but I know I have a connection with her. And I'll either hear her, hear her um, voice, um, it, and usually with Haley, I hear her voice. Their voices sound like uh, children, playful children. Um, and it's in a little different space in my mind than um, my usual mind chatter. Um, it's always gentle and childlike. Um, and she's, um, so right now she just showed me a picture of her batting her tail. She's like, the animals all, also think I talk too much. And I just told her um, while I'm talking to you, I, I, which I find amazing that um, I can talk to her and you at the same time, sometimes. Um, I just told her we're in a teaching moment right now and that I have her on hold um, and that I'm you know, using her 
um, her energy um, and her good nature to help me explain. Uh, oh, and so she said, oh, okay. And she just looked at me. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, so my, uh, and my cat officer just said, so what about me? I, yeah. Okay. There is you too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't get in a fight with Haley right now. <laughs> um, so back to um, back to how we do this. Imagination. Besides the breath, it's the imagination. Um, our imagination is everything. Um, our imagination, besides our breath, is our uh, another most important tool. Our imagination is real. Everything begins in the imagination. Every creative idea every idea begins in the imagination it can be a fear-based or a love-based yeah. but everything um, people who say design furniture in their imagination they see that table and how they might want it to look and what kind of wood they might use and then it comes out it, they go and purchase that wood and they create the table however they do their woodworking and there's the table. It comes out from the mind out into the, the physical world. So our imagination is real. Um, I, think, I think it's important what you say because we live in this information physicality based reality. Um, this is all that surrounds us and we don't have space and time to even consider that there is that intuition, imagination, creativity, the thought, that's our connection to the divine, that's who we are, that we have a spark. Mm -hmm. And the animals have that reconnection to us if we let them. And uh, what people don't know that I will share, if you don't mind, is when uh, we've consulted with, with uh, Lynn so many times, we always come back to the Lynn whenever we move, whenever, you know, Charlie has to go to the vet and so on and so forth. So they know what's happening, that they're not anxious. But what strikes me each time when Lynn you start the session is when you know okay the heart is open the opening of the heart is okay the connection is established that's how you do it so the heart the heart the heart the heart mm -hmm. is all connected that's the beauty of it yeah. And so, yeah so so the breathing is free we all have it so hopefully when mm -hmm. lynn was walking us through it you guys were breathing i was <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, it's a reminder because we are breathing shallow here when we are stressed holding our chest. Exactly. We have to expand. And that kind of brings it to even cellular level. The cells inside us, they can contract when they are in fear. They're not taking nutrients in, they don't grow. Or they can expand when they're growing, when they're happy. Just like you said, if you are in one state, you cannot be in the other. If you are in joy, you cannot be in that stress response. They're exclusive, mutually exclusive. So whatever we can do to find that joy is what we want. And with the animals, well, what happens when your kitty jumps on your chest with purring? Mm -hmm. That's where the heart can open. You can let go, take a deep breath, connect, and get into that joy because that's a, that's a magical moment right there. That's mm -hmm. the joy. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so people are anxious and animals don't know why. So our responsibility is to somehow communicate mm -hmm. that we're okay. We're right. Just right. Mm -hmm. And when we feel that love pouring through our hearts, the animals relax because they can feel that. We have four metaphysical senses. Um, and I don't have my notes with me, so right. uh, <laughs> and it's okay. Um, uh, so I call them the clairs, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and the other clair that I can never remember the name of unless I have my notes in front of me. But I do know what they do. So clear seeing, clair clairvoyance, clear hearing, clairaudience, clear sensing or feeling is um uh clear audience clairvoyance clear sentience clear sensing and then clear 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 feeling so i can either see pictures in my mind's eye hear their voices 
feel my heart opening or feel the fear a lot i'll feel the animals how they're feeling i'll ask i see to you feel their feelings in my body uh -huh. so a lot of times when an animal it has fear all of a sudden i have a hard time breathing ah. and i have to go back to my deep belly breathing i can feel my heart tightening up and so i know they they have fear um, and so we talk to them about the fear and i tell them um, I will first thing that I do with the animals is let them know who I am and why I'm there and that everything is okay and we're going to be right here in this moment so that's what you can tell your animals also we're right here in this moment as I'm looking around and feeling feeling in my heart in this moment I am experiencing joy I love talking to you Kasha and I feel my heart opening because my two kitties are sitting next to me and quite honestly they don't sit that close to each other very often and they know that this is what we're doing and they both stood up um, they're now resting again but they both stood up um, and were at attention when I was talking to them and telling about how I connect with them and as soon as I we started a different vein of the conversation they both are relaxing and waiting to see if I need them but there to me was a very physical um, acknowledgement um, that I was definitely having a conversation with them they were both more, much more animated and looking an officer who has his back to me they both do right now but officer turned around and he was looking at me while I was communicating um, so that is that is so important because I think sometimes we live side by side um, our animal companions not really fully understanding that they are actually right there with us mm -hmm. have a conversation they're watching they're listening they're so close they're so in tuned because like, like you said they have a job and their job oftentimes is to I don't know, protect you, love you, show you that love, open that heart. They have a job. They literally have a serious job and they feel they have a job. That's why you were saying they're confused now what their job is, right? We Correct. don't, I don't think we, we actually know that most of us, we mm -hmm. don't know that. And when you do that exercise and you have that intention and you start noticing, you may notice that he actually raised his head and turned mm -hmm. around and looked at me. Mm -hmm. Was it in my head or did he actually hear my thoughts? It actually is happening. I'm going to tell a story. The okay. recent one when uh, Lynn and I was on the call, we're trying to have a virtual tea sometimes. And so I ran with my laptop to the spare bedroom. Charlie is taking a nap. And Charlie loves, Charlie loves Lynn. He invites her himself without, you know, he just talks to her <laughs> just because he wants to. And so I said, Charlie, look. Lynn is here, say hello. And he's, he's, he's like, he's sleeping, he's like, yeah, what? So he looks at the YouTube video, because I just put it right there, to say hello. He looks there and Lynn is laughing and he has this look on his face. It's like, <laughs> oh no. And Lynn says, remember what the message was? I don't, I... Uh... Don't tell me I have to go to the vet again? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's like no no so Lynn is laughing and saying you know he thinks there's something that is going to happen again that's why we're talking that's why we're talking Lynn and I and Charlie it's like, no no we're just talking today Charlie you're not going to know that just nothing is happening and literally when that when Lynn explained that he was like okay mm -hmm. you can see the body language you can see the energy shift it's like oh I was worried. <laughs> yeah, no, I, mean, I know I really do remember that conversation. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, he's a good, he's a, I love talking to Charlie. He's, he's, uh, he's got a great sense of humor and he's very aware, um, as yeah. most animals are very aware. Well, I want people to realize that there is this love affair that we haven't tapped into. That mm. you know you love, you know you blink at your animal, you love your animal. They have a language and they're right there. And that channel is open. If we can just mm -hmm. understand that it's there, like you said, just the intention and the focus and the breath, right. they can mm -hmm. tap right in there. Um, I want to share another story, mm -hmm. plain story. So I'll oh. start and you'll finish. 
<laughs> we have a parrot and we have a small parrot and we have Charlie. And so we were moving across the country and we were literally leaving the empty house, leaving the empty house behind. Everything was already gone. It was completely empty. We were not going back, getting into the cab, going to the airport and flying across the country with two animals. They've never done that. And, 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 and so I was so busy cleaning up the last pieces of property as we were putting our backpacks together and walking out, I forgot to Lynn, to call Lynn because we had an appointment set. So she would remind the animals that we were gonna fly and walk them through it again because they only remember two, three uh, nights, right? They don't remember months and weeks. Right, right, so, right. So keep it in mind that they, you have to refresh it. And so I forgot, we just, you know, it's hectic. I, the, we put them in the carriers into the, the ta cab we go and before we sit down in the cab Charlie had peed in the carrier he's gonna be in this carrier all day on the place like oh no what happened I did not I forgot to warn him and so I think Lynn you said he he just lost it he he forgot he just got stressed out and that's what happened but yeah. oh, so so I was so sorry now now this is the distinction this is the biggest difference in your life, in your experience as a human that you will have when you understand this. I was not mad at him. I was sorry that I failed. I was sorry I forgot to talk to him. I was sorry he got upset and scared because we're in a rush and we kind of, you know, don't talk to them because we're in our world and they don't know. And so you have much more compassion and understanding instead of thinking he has a behavior problem and. I need to euthanize him or give him away. It's a big issue, such a big issue. It's heartbreaking when I, when I see that. So poor thing is in his, you know, it's like, okay. We come to the airport, we sit there, we have 30 minutes, like, okay, I need to get on the call. Lynn, are you, are you there? Yes, let's talk. So I'm sitting there at the gate, talking to Lynn. Then was able to map out, and Lynn has a gift of explaining the, the animal experience in human language to us and then relaying what we say in a way that the animals understand it's just magical so she was explaining there will be a lot of feet you will sit down you'll be under the you know under the floor there will be a lot of feet going but they will settle and then there's going to be so much time explaining the time in their terms so and i remember you asking charlie do you think you will need to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. you think you can hold it i can hold it Yep. And, and they knew they would be sitting next to each other under the seats. They knew our seats would be right there, our feet would be right there. And you told them it would be like a long nap. And then you're gonna be a new home and so on and so forth. And I could not believe it. There was not a squawk, there was not a meow, there was not a, you know, um, a growling or anything. There was no complaining. Uh, Charlie was not scratching. I can't believe he did not scratch at his carrier at all. He just went to sleep. And, and, our, and our parrot also, Serengeti, was just quiet, was just quiet, wasn't chewing on the carrier either. They just went to sleep. They knew exactly what was happening. And I remember you talked to Serengeti and said, we will be on the plane. And he said, oh, I can, I can fly there too. Yeah. And said, not as high. You can't fly that high. We're going to go higher. And, uh, and so and another thing I remember, they have memory. I remember when I was going to a conference, um, it was like a week conference or, or seven, 10 days. And so you were telling him that I'll be gone so he doesn't worry, which mm -hmm. is important, you guys, if you have to travel, tell them. Um, and his only concern was, do I have to fly? Yeah, he didn't want to do that. Better her than me, that's what you said, right? Better yeah, than me. I don't need to go good. I'm happy. So I remember we were in the middle of the flight. Mm -hmm. you told me that later. Mm -hmm. You're eating dinner with your husband. Do you want to tell that story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, see, I was eating dinner. I was just minding my own business. And I heard Charlie say, what was that? And I said, oh, just a little turbulence. That was just, a, I don't know how I knew. I just knew that there was turbulence. And, um, 
So I said, don't worry, it's just a little turbulence, a little air pocket that, you know, wind, and it made the plane go bum bum. And, it, and it's fine, you just have to, you can just go back and listen to the um, rumbling of the engine and allow that to ground you and put you back to sleep. And you'll be there. And I knew when you left, so I could let him know about how long your flight was, you know, how much farther he had to go, how many, you know, much more time for his nap. Um, so yeah, but it was pretty funny. I, and I just kept eating. I don't even know if I told my husband, oh yeah, a cat just talked to me while I was eating. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the, 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 only, the only thing I remember is that you said, he said, okay. Yep, that's what he said. Okay. I know. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, there was a little moth flying here, as you can, I can see. I saw him. Uh -huh. I, I've never had a moth sit in front of me on, they're not like that, on, it's sitting right there in front of me with his little antennas moving, mm -hmm. he's not flying out. He just landed there and he's been sitting there. Mm -hmm. He probably wants us to know what um, what he thinks about the uh, of what's happening in the world because the the um, the wild animals have been coming to me and, and telling me what their thoughts are that and that we shouldn't be afraid um, and so I, I'd be interesting to see what moth has to say and I take it um, they show up at, at um, opportune times so now I have to I'll have to put moth on my um, <laughs> on my um, list of animals. I see him. He's pretty, yeah, it looks like he a little actually, white leaf. He actually walked around so he was facing me standing and then he took off. Like, that has never happened to me. Mm -hmm. He's a little, little fellow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's interesting because uh, even, like, I really want our listeners and viewers to understand that they are, they are so involved in us. I remember when I was writing the book, Charlie was, was really always like, I was, you know, on my laptop on bed, I had all these notes, and he would be sitting there, like sitting there on the left and holding his paw here, and like holding it on my notes. And I didn't make anything out of it until Lynn, of course, told me, well, he said, he, he was putting his finishing touches. He was like, he was managing this process. It was very important. The book was very important. He was very pleased and proud. It's like, how would he know, right? Well, we, they're right there with us. Right there, uh-huh. All the animals, um, both domestic and wild, talk to each other telepathically. The human species, we are the only ones who don't. We did when we were born. We're born to be able to do that, but we forget. Um, and we're, we're, um, uh, we're taught to use our words, to use a different kind of language mm -hmm. to communicate. And so it's, yeah, it's like a muscle that we're not using. You know, if I'm not exercising my muscles, um, they don't have the strength that they do when they're all in tune. That's true. Um, and so uh, for me, it's, ex it's like exercising this muscle every day um, to, to really be able to, and to know from experience that I'm, I'm talking it's to them. <laughs> it's not bad. So that's why you're able to teach people like me. You can have classes and teach communication yeah. because it's just that muscle that we have to use. Right. We all have it. We all have those metaphysical senses, say, as, uh, same as our physical senses. Most of us, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have our, our eyes, our ears, our nose, you know, so he hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, uh, those are physical senses. Our metaphysical are clear seeing, clear hearing, clear feeling, clear sensing. Okay. Uh -huh. And so we all have those. Uh, and so it's a matter of determining what how how do I communicate? What is you know what is my uh, main way? So mainly I see pictures and I hear their voices. Then so, then I'll feel their feelings, and lastly I sense and have a sense of knowing that something is true. So um, and, so and I work with everybody to figure that out. What is how, what is how do you communicate? What language are you using? Yeah, and and. The gift is that uh, when you are in that space, starting a conversation, let's say with Charlie or Serengeti, 
uh, there is a peacefulness and love and, and it feels like I really am in a different space. And then when you start, and there's hummingbird that is coming to say hello as well, right there outside the window. Um, everybody loves you. They just want to come and take part, right? And, uh, mm -hmm. um, and the way you explain the reality for both sides, you know, it's just beautiful and very healing because you have that heart open, you have all that love. And so that's a very healing space. And I, I can't stress it enough if for anyone watching us right now, if you have animal companion, I don't know what I would have done in all the complicated situations and life changes, um, dragging our animals into these situations without Lynn, if I didn't know she had uh, my back. So for example, um, when we were flying, this was the first time for the poor parrot to be on the plane. Well, Charlie too, but parrots are so much more fragile, I would think. Yeah. And then my husband was, was so anxious about it. And so we were talking to Serengeti and you were saying, um, to, he, he agreed to be compliant because my husband mm -hmm. thought that they would open the cage, he would fly at the airport and it would be a disaster and what is gonna happen, I'm gonna lose him and he's gonna break his wings and oh my gosh. So they took us to the private room, then they opened the cage, the, you know, the, the mm -hmm. they opened the, uh, yeah, they, they opened the, the carriers and literally, Serengeti went on his best behavior. He was on his shoulder. He didn't go anywhere. He was trying to, he was trying to laugh. Like he was trying to nibble on his ear and laugh. And then later when we talk about it, he told you that he was trying to make him laugh actually. Mm -hmm. And just relax, relax. It's okay. Relax, yes, relax. Exactly. <laughs> and so we had such a peaceful transition. I mean, we were flying from Baltimore to Seattle. And then after that we had to, you know, you had to get the luggage and then drive and then drive and then we slept on the floor in our new house there was no furniture just the blanket from a friend so i i can imagine a lot more behavioral problems chewing uh like self-chewing mm -hmm. urination pooping uh aggression hissing i mean you name it mm -hmm. i can imagine easily without having somebody like you we always work with lynn and i encourage you to find somebody or we're going to put links to lynn so you can find her because you've been doing it for a long time they are such part of our lives mm -hmm. and i think this conversation hopefully will will change the way you look at them and you can talk closer to them so tell me more about some um some funniest or most surprising or a most amazing events you had in your communications between our species? Yeah, well, it's so funny because my horse Boo just came in too. He, um, oh, I, uh, him. I visited him and physically today, um, but and I, he's been with me for uh, seven or eight years now. And um, I actually, um, he was gifted to me by my, my animal communication teacher when she could no longer um, have him because she had cystic fibrosis and she couldn't get into the the barn and so she wanted him to have more companionship but um when we went to get my sister and i went to get him um he was in southern wisconsin and i'm in we're in dark county wisconsin so it's about a four four hour trip um with the truck and the trailer and uh we're driving home and um he was so good he hardly I was talking to him and um, my teacher was talking to him and he she asked him if he wanted to come with me and he did um, and he understood that he wasn't she wasn't abandoning him that um, she wanted him to have a better life that with somebody that you know could could um, get in the barn with him and, and be with him and um when I, when we were coming into sturgeon bay um we were really close we were only about um uh, 15 miles from home um and it was the beginning of july i remember it was a kind of a warm day uh but i said to him i i, I when i come into when i whenever i drive into sturgeon bay from going on a trip i think oh good i'm home mm. and i he heard me say it um 
oh good we're home and he's he said and i saw him in my mind's eye looking around i could also look in the rearview mirror um and see because i could see his head and through the little window in the trailer um but i saw and i did see him looking around and i heard him say it's so green here because <laughs> all the grasses were really tall and very green we had had quite a bit of uh, rain and so everything was really green lush and tall compared to uh, southern wisconsin where he came from but his tone of voice it just i and i think of that sometimes that was like one of the first things where we we first started to get to know each other was mm -hmm. it's so green here uh -huh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, it's like it's like humans having conversations and opinions animals mm -hmm. have opinions and likes and dislikes right yeah yeah he was very excited that um that uh, this was going to be okay it was going to be okay mm -hmm. um uh and um and i know he felt comfortable because my sister i had my sister go with me she he was, lives at my sister's house and she's uh very knowledgeable um, about how you know taking care of horses and transporting and and um, so she was very good to him to um, talking to him physically talking to him and getting him some water when we stopped at the gas station so it was just a, a real easy and speaking of traveling I guess that's why he came in to say you know his experience about traveling was because we all there he had so much support um, you know yeah. and, and he was leaving his home and leaving his um his other two horses in the herd and so that could be a very traumatic but when, when he said how how he he noticed the grass he that was just pure excitement and childlike uh a real childlike um sensation um and it really uh it made me it eased my worry also because he's my first horse um, I've never had, I, before him, I didn't, I, I liked horses and I had been around horses, but I always went home then, you know. <laughs> That's different, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. He's a beautiful mm -hmm. horse. He's a beautiful, yeah. I meet yeah. him in person one day. Yeah. Um, he's a gorgeous horse. So <clears throat> I know, remember, um, you told a story to me once about a horse that refused to uh, go to a fair, just wouldn't get out of the uh, trailer. And you talked to him and he actually was afraid he would be abandoned but when he explained yeah. to him that they were actually showing him off mm -hmm. he got it he effortlessly got out and he shined and he won a reward or one of the two rewards yes. she was yeah. shining for the family she was excited because he was scared yeah. he would be a dumb he, would, but he had been hurt mm -hmm. just like yeah. yep. just he um he had been living at that farm for about a year Mm -hmm. and he loved living at that farm and um he hadn't he trailered just fine to get to the farm he walked right on and walked right off and and it, you know the ride was fine um uh but when they brought him out to um to get on the trailer what they wanted to do was uh it was uh um the woman's daughter's horse and going to take them to the fair to show them off in the halter class it would be their first both the daughter and this horse it would be their their it first time. Mm -hmm. his yeah. name is mike <laughs> mike the horse. it was a big deal but there there's this disconnect so the humans were not aware that the horse didn't know yeah. didn't, you know yeah, they couldn't figure out they could not figure out why he wouldn't get on the trailer and it was very Oh, everybody was distraught. Oh, that was, they were, she called and she was just having just a real time of it. He was all sweaty and Mike was all sweaty and kind of foamy, you know, he just had so much fear and she was all sweaty and uh, she just didn't want him to be afraid and she couldn't figure out why he wouldn't get on the trailer. And so I talked to him and he said he was afraid that he had done something wrong and they were taking him back to his old farm and he I said was afraid he had done something wrong he wouldn't he have done on the trailer wrong. Uh -huh. and they didn't he, he couldn't figure out what he did wrong and they were going to take him back to his other farm um again he was he was afraid he didn't do his job and um that uh that he they were letting him go they were firing him 
And so I said, oh, no, no, to the contrary, that's not it at all. They want to, they love you so much, they want to show you off. They want to take, so I imagined as I was telling him, in my mind, telling him in my thoughts, I was imagining a picture in my mind's eye about getting into the trailer, walking in, and I told him, I will walk on with you. Now this horse was um, about a two hour drive from me. So I'm at my house and he's at his house. Um, so it was all through our imagination, mm -hmm. in my mind's eye, um, telepathically. Um, and so I imagined that um, I was on the trailer with him and, and petting him and his, and his lady and, the, and girl were in the truck and they were gonna be careful and drive him. And we were gonna, we went around, I imagined we went around the country block once and we came home and he got off and went in his stall and had his dinner. And then we did that again. We did it a few times so that he would know that he's getting off the trailer, he's going in his stall, and he's having his dinner. And the fourth time, we took a little bit longer trip. I had to imagine where's the fairgrounds. I, I told him, I don't know exactly the trip that you're taking, but it's longer than what we've been practicing, that you're going to the fair. She's going to, and I imagined her walking him around within the halter class, then he's getting back on the trailer, he's going home and he's having dinner that same night. He's not staying overnight at the fairgrounds, he's going home that same night. The next morning she called me, he walked right straight on that trailer with no trepidation, no fear, right straight on. Um, they got to the fair, she, they, um, now Mike knew what he was doing in the fair and so she led him around in the, the halter class and they actually placed they got a ribbon um, so their very first time they got a ribbon and they beat um, there was a couple other horses that had been there been there before who had won ribbons in the past and um, she, um, the girl and Mike um, beat beat a couple of, you know at least one of those um they maybe they uh, the other one placed i don't really remember but mike came home with a ribbon to hang in his stall um and after that he he just gets right on that right on the trailer he knows he's home he knows his his people love him um and and so uh I helped him. The next time I helped him was when another horse came to join the herd. And he was, again, he was worried that, uh oh, I must have done something wrong. They're needing to bring somebody in to replace me. So I helped them, um, helped him with that also. And they ended up getting along very well and, and eased the new horse into the herd real easily. And uh, it's, it, it's always good when everybody knows what's happening. No, this is what I want to drive home to everyone is um, it's so much more like humans when we uh, somebody says something negative and we think we did something wrong but in their case it's worse because they think we're disposing of them and letting them go mm -hmm. and they blame they blame it on themselves they don't know what it was and what they did but they assume they've done something wrong that's going to be disposed of so if you ever have problems, behavior, problems with the animals, you know, track it back to what, why could they be like this? If they were humans, how would you handle it differently? What would you think about? Do you need a, do you need a consult? Do you need to jump on with somebody like Lynn to help you troubleshoot? Because I mean, in the worst case scenarios, the animals are put in shelter and then euthanized, literally, because they're pooping outside of the litter or because they hate the litter. The litter is not appropriate. Sometimes I think, what did the human think putting this litter in this way? I mean, this is not for cats. Whoever designed this, you know, we don't know. We think that this is perfect, but we don't ask. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes certain litter hurts them, especially if they have their declawed, which please don't do it. Please, please don't. But if it's done, they have arthritis. They have pain in their, in their uh, hands, their paws. And that sand, that litter hurts them. So they may be doing it outside. Like, I had a cat until he died. I didn't know it was only later, years later, that I realized the reason he would go to an empty bathtub, that would be the only place he would go, is because it didn't hurt him. There was no sound, there was nothing, so he could dead. And mm -hmm. the box was associated with pain. So, you know, it's like 
just just oh, being aware that the animals have feelings and fears. They are so part of us. They are so afraid. We want to let them go for some reason. If you if something is going on, just think about that and see if you can resolve it and open that heart. I think that would help a lot of animals. <laughs> and us, uh, because we're more yeah. empowered. Mm -hmm. And in turn, um, when we help the animals, it's, it shows us how to, as humans, it shows us how to open our hearts and really feel the love. There's a lot, I know for me, before I started really working with the animals, I thought I knew how to love. Um, but once I started talking to the animals and experienced that, my heart opening so fully, that tears start coming down and um, I know there's so much love flowing through my heart that um, it has to come out of my body some way in the form of tears. Yeah, I remember um, sometimes you say that, okay, the heart is open, tears in my eyes, yeah, it's coming. Tearing, tearing up and it's, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, that's, I think, the best part of, of my job is feeling that heart opening and knowing that the animals and the humans are experiencing that. Um, because the animals mostly are here, um, their jobs mainly are to help us open our hearts and feel love and be also be in the moment, um, you know, because they are so in the moment. They're trying to teach us to be in the moment and slow down. Um, I had a cat. Um, I, yeah, I'm a cat person. Um, I love dogs. I visit my friends' dogs, but um, my cat's probably my cats that I have right now will not allow a dog on the property. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm picking because I had two hummingbirds just popping in and saying hello. Keep going. But um, I had a cat um, once uh, where I worked. I used to work at a halfway house and I lived there part time. My husband and I lived there part time and then here at this house part time. So we'd go back and forth and Cleo was his, um, his name. And Whenever, whenever I went um, back over there and I changed the sheets to, you know, now we're going to be here for 10 days. So I put clean sheets on the bed and, um, and every time, you know, and I usually get there and I want to unpack my clothes and get stuff ready because I had to move back and forth and get that darn bed made. And every time he, I would make the bed, he'd dive under the sheets, dive under, and I'd Cleo, Cleo. Uh -huh. I didn't take the time to talk to him. I just was in a hurry. Right, um, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, um, so he would do that, and I'd move him out of the way and make the bed. And then a friend of mine who's a, a, also an animal communicator said, he's trying to get you to slow down, relax, and have some joy. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to, to have joy. Um, hi, Haley. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the message is delivered. Uh -huh. Maybe I um, have message. Yes. Yeah. So he, Cleo. So what Cleo was trying to get me to do was to slow down and play with him. And so then, after I finally figured, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, after I finally knew that. He never did that again. He never jumped in the sheets under the sheets again. And that, then, when I wanted him to to play with me, he was like, "No, message delivered." Too late now. I'm just gonna go be, be a cat. <laughs> but um, that was a prime example of me not listening and not paying attention. Well, we're human. You know, I, I knew he wanted me to play with them. I just didn't want to take the time to do it and feel that joy. Um, by his his physical activity, I knew he did. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, and, and if I would have taken the time to talk to him, <laughs> I would have known sooner. Um, this is a good time to take the time because uh, mm -hmm. we are cooked in the homes and animals are anxious. So get get those balls and start mm -hmm. rolling those balls and throwing them. Um, you were talking previously about the animals in uh, the animal kingdom outside, not domesticated. Like the, the the hummingbirds keep interrupting us, and it's the first day when I see two of them together. That hasn't happened. This is a new feeder, and they finally figured out that they can feed here. So we had visitors because of the skull, mm -hmm. two of, both of them. Um, but what, what are you hearing? They're popping in. You said you go out in the garden. Or they're, the birds, I remember some, some birds have been talking to you. What, what are they saying? Mm -hmm. Well, the hummingbirds are wanting us to, to be joyful and flit 
flit around and just really um, notice, notice, notice. They're saying, notice, notice, notice this plant, notice that plant. You know, they're noticing everything that's new in the spring and what's, you know, it's springtime. So it's time to get out and really notice. And also um, to, uh, there's, they're talking about um, being, being very joyful. And, um, and as we, they really want us to know as as we do go out when we do have go to the grocery store whatever the things are that we we need to do uh to make sure that um we they're asking us to smile with our eyes if if we're wearing our mask you can't see our smiles so they're asking us to smile with our eyes and really go out of our way to say hello to each other um the majority of us are are not sick it, you know there's a, a yeah. few that are and unfortunately that's happening but the the majority of us are are not sick and the reason that we're staying in is to keep it that way but we can still be joyful with each other um we can lift they're asking us to lift our hearts and be joyful um and so when we do uh do our six feet you know of distance to say hello maybe when we wouldn't normally make eye contact with each other and acknowledge that we're passing by somebody but to smile with our eyes um we feel that way we don't feel so they're they're saying that that way we don't feel so secluded and alone Mm -hmm. that you know we are really you know they're talking a lot of uh the um uh, the commercials on tv and such are saying you know we're in this together and and that's the one way that we really can be feel that we are truly in this together we aren't alone so um and that's what those the hummingbirds are are joyfully telling us to remind remind us that we are joyful beings it's okay to let go of fear um to be in the moment and notice what is popping up notice what's coming in for us not just the the new plants you know the spring plants and flowers but um noticing what else is popping up for us what are the gifts um, there's many, many gifts, and, and that is being in the moment, and what are the gifts? What are the gifts? You are a gift, my dear. Uh, please tell them to thank them for the message. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are heard. Um, I remember when we were moving from one place to another, of course, we talked to Lynn, of course, you know, animals knew what, what was happening. But my husband had fed the squirrels there, and the hummingbirds, and she was very passionate about having the seeds and squirrels. Everyone was fed. And so we were leaving. There was just me and the hummingbirds. And we had that conversation with Lynn. Lynn, we need to say goodbye to them. And Lynn was saying, you know, um, what was the restaurant was open? How was it that the hummingbirds were saying? They knew that this was a great restaurant. Oh, and that's recipe, right. Mm-hmm. Whatever the restaurant was, was the feeder that my husband was always right. there for them. And so apparently in their world, the message spread. So you were saying, where we move to another part of town, those hummingbirds will know that the restaurant, it's a good restaurant to go to. restaurant, yeah. It's Mm -hmm. funny how it's worded, it's a restaurant, and the restaurant is now open. (laughs) So, Uh so. And the hummingbirds are finding the restaurant and they know which restaurants are the good ones to go to, because they're always open. In other words, there's always food there. Oh, there. There he is. So, um, oh, so- they just showed me too. Um, um, Mark with the chef hat on. <laughs> Here, <laughs> I just saw him with the white chef hat. He's the one that fills the feeders. He's the head chef. <laughs> He's the one, you guys. Yes, he's sitting right there and eating. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we've talked about the animals in the wild. They are aware of where we are, and they're asking for love and heart opening. We talked about our animals with us. Pay attention, open that heart and see. Uh, the blink for the kitty is always a good idea to see if they blink back because they connect playing mm-hmm. with them. And I'm gonna put some, uh, some resources for healthier foods, avoiding dry foods and all that. Um, and link to Lynn. Uh, the, the journey of us having animals and having somebody like you to facilitate adds a different dimension to our love affair with them and my life has been so enriched because of your service and your advocacy for them 
And so there's also a, a, a man, Jackson Galaxy, you can Google him. He's a behaviorist. Uh, he has a couple of books also on catification. So you can make your home a happy place for the cats. And I actually reached out to his team because in my dream of dream, I see you and Jackson connecting together one day. Uh, you both have this amazing light work that you're doing for, for he for cats in particular. Um, but the, the bottom line is, thank you for inspiring me to create this, what matters. They matter. Thank we you. matter to them more than we think. Your advocacy mm -hmm. matters a whole lot to a big mm -hmm. world out there. So I just wish that your advocacy blooms that a lot of us learn and that we can be better for it and better, better stewards of our animals. Thank you for coming, my dear. I love you. I love you too. <laughs>